Charles Krauthammer, conservative columnist and pundit, dies New York, AP. Charles Krauthammer, the Pulitzer Prize-winning columnist and pundit who helped shape and occasionally dissented from the conservative movement as he evolved from Great Society Democrat to Iraq War cheerleader to denouncer of Donald Trump, has died. He was 68, ad choice advertising and read invented by Teeds his Thursday death was announced by two organizations that were longtime employers, Fox News Channel and The Washington Post. Krauthammer had said publicly a year ago he was being treated for a cancerous tumor in his abdomen and earlier this month revealed that he likely had just weeks to live. I leave this life with no regrets. Krauthammer wrote in the Washington Post, where his column had run since 1984. It was a wonderful life, full and complete with the great loves and great endeavors that make it worth living. I am sad to leave, but I leave with the knowledge that I lived the life that I intended. Advertisement sometimes scornful, sometimes reflective, he was awarded a Pulitzer in 1987, for his witty and insightful commentary and was an influential voice among Republicans, whether through his syndicated column or his appearances on Fox News Channel. He was most associated with Brit Hume's nightly newscast and stayed with it when Brett Byer took over in 2009. Krauthammer is credited with coining the term, the Reagan Doctrine, for President Reagan's policy of aiding anti-communist movements worldwide. He was a leading advocate for the Iraq War and a prominent critic of President Barack Obama, whom he praised for his first-class intellect and first-class temperament and denounced for having a highly suspect character. Krauthammer was a former Harvard medical student who graduated even after he was paralyzed from the neck down because of a diving board accident, continuing his studies from his hospital bed. He was a Democrat in his youth and his political engagement dated back to 1976 when he handed out leaflets for Henry Jackson's unsuccessful presidential campaign. But through the 1980s and beyond, Krauthammer followed a journey akin to such neoconservative predecessors as Irving Kristol and Norman Podhoretz turning against his old party on foreign and domestic issues. He aligned with Republicans on everything from confrontation with the Soviet Union to rejection of the Great Society programs enacted during the 1960s. Advertisement, as I became convinced of the practical and theoretical defects of the social democratic tendencies of my youth, it was but a short distance to a philosophy of restrained, free market governance that gave more space and place to the individual and to the civil society that stands between citizen and state, he wrote in the introduction to, Things That Matter, a million-selling compilation of his writings published in 2013. For the Post, Time magazine, The New Republic and other publications, Krauthammer wrote on a wide range of subjects, and in, Things That Matter, listed chess, baseball, the innocence of dogs and, the cunning of cats, among his passions. As a psychiatrist in the 1970s, he did groundbreaking research on bipolar disorder, but he found nothing could live apart from government and the civic realm. science, medicine, art, poetry, architecture, and other fields were fundamentally subordinate. In the end, they must bow to the sovereignty of politics. Ever blunt in his criticisms, Krauthammer was an intense disliker, the liberal columnist E.J. He untold Politico in 2009. And opponents had words for him. Christopher Hitchens once called him the newest of the neocon mini windbags with the arduous job, in an arduous time, of being an unpredictable conformist. He was attacked for his politics and for his predictions. He was so confident of quick success in Iraq he initially labeled the 2003 invasion the three-week war and defended the conflict for years. He also backed the George W. Bush administration's use of torture as an uncontrolled experiment carried out, sometimes clumsily, sometimes cruelly, indeed, sometimes wrongly, but successfully.
it kept his safe. Advertisement and the former president praised Crowdhammer after hearing of his death. For decades, Charles's words have strengthened our democracy, George W. Bush said in a statement. His work was far-reaching and influential, and while his voice will be deeply missed, his ideas and values will always be a part of our country. Crowdhammer was sure that Obama would lose in 2008 because of lingering fears from the SEP. 11, 2001 attacks, and foresaw Mitt Romney defeating him in 2012. But he prided himself on his rejection of orthodoxy and took on Republicans, too, observing during a Fox special in 2013 that, if you're going to leave the medical profession because you think you have something to say, you betray your whole life if you don't say what you think and if you don't say it honestly and bluntly. He criticized the death penalty and rejected intelligent design as, today's tarted up version of creationism. In 2005, he was widely cited as a key factor in convincing Bush to rescind the Supreme Court nomination of the president's friend and legal advisor Harriet Mears, whom Crowdhammer and others said lacked the necessary credentials. And he differed with such Fox commentators as Bill O'Reilly and Laura Ingram as he found himself among the increasingly isolated, never Trumpers, Republicans regarding the real estate baron and former apprentice star as a Bulgarian unfit for the presidency. I used to think Trump was an 11-year-old and undeveloped schoolyard bully, he wrote in August 2016, around the time Trump officially became the Republican nominee. I was off by about 10 years. His needs are more primitive, an infantile hunger for approval and praise, a craving that can never be satisfied. He lives in a cocoon of solipsism where the world outside himself has value, indeed exists, only insofar as it sustains and inflates him. Trump, of course, tweeted about Crowdhammer, who, pretends to be a smart guy, but if you look at his record, he isn't. A dummy who is on too many Fox shows. An overrated clown. Crowdhammer married Robin Trekui, an artist and former attorney, in 1974. They had a son, Daniel, who also became a columnist and commentator. The son of Jewish immigrants from Europe, Crowdhammer was born in New York City and moved with his family to Montreal when he was five, growing up in a French-speaking home. His path to political writing was unexpected. First, at McGill University, he became editor-in-chief of the student newspaper after his predecessor was ousted over what Crowdhammer called his mindless, humorless Maoism. In the late 1970s, while a psychiatric resident at Massachusetts General Hospital, a professor with whom he had researched manic depression was appointed to a mental health agency created by President Jimmy Carter. Crowdhammer went to, began writing for the New Republic and was soon recruited to write speeches for Carter's vice president and 1980 running mate, Walter Mondale. Carter was defeated by Reagan and on Jan. 20, 1981, Reagan's inauguration day, Crowdhammer formally joined the New Republic as a writer and editor. These quite fantastic twists and turns have given me a profound respect for serendipity, he wrote in 2013. A long forgotten, utterly trivial student council fight brought me to journalism. A moment of adolescent anger led me to the impulsive decision to quit political studies and enroll in medical school. A decade later, a random presidential appointment having nothing to do with me brought me to a place where my writing and public career could begin. When a young journalist asks me today, how do I get to a nationally syndicated columnist, I have my answer, first, go to medical school, underscore 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 AP television writer David Bowder contributed to this report. By Tabula by Tabula sponsored links sponsored links promoted links promoted links you may like Vikings free online game play this for one minute and see why everyone is addicted Vikings free online game Undofar.
for two minutes and see why everyone is addicted drone, free online game Undebebe language expert shares the secret to learning a language in 20 minutes at Debebel Indo I Candy Top 20 most expensive dogs in the world I Candy Indo A Frizzip 20 most generous billionaires in the world A Frizzip